When does e to the x equal x squared? This simple equation hides a beautiful secret. There's no elementary algebraic solution. Instead, we'll need visual intuition, calculus, and a special function you've probably never heard of. Let's see how these tools work together to crack this problem completely. Let's start with what mathematicians always do when stuck. Draw a picture. We'll plot both sides as separate functions and see what they tell us about where solutions might be hiding. We'll set up our coordinate system here. In blue, we have the exponential function, y equals e to the x. And in green, the parabola, y equals x squared. Notice there's exactly one intersection point, located in the second quadrant where x is negative and y is positive. On the positive side, the exponential grows far too fast for the parabola to ever catch up. Let's zoom in to see exactly where these curves intersect. At x equals negative 0 0.703, both functions have the same value. Zooming back out, we can see the full behavior. Graphs suggest where solutions hide, but only rigorous analysis can guarantee uniqueness and existence. So here's our game plan. We'll prove two things. First, that there are zero solutions when x is non-negative. And second, that there's exactly one solution when x is negative. Part A. Let's show there are no solutions when x is greater than or equal to zero. For this, we'll need some calculus. Let's define a helper function, h of x, as e to the x minus x squared. Why this particular function? Because the zeros of this function are precisely the solutions we're hunting for. When h of x equals zero, that means e to the x equals x squared. Our goal is to show that h of x is always positive when x is non-negative, meaning it never hits zero. First, let's check the starting value. At x equals zero, e to the zero is one, and zero squared is zero. So our function starts positive at the value one. Now, if we can show that HO is strictly increasing on this interval, we're done. The function will stay positive forever. Let's compute the derivative. That's the rate of change. It tells us if the function is increasing. Taking the derivative with respect to x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. Let's evaluate this at x equals 0. At x equals 0, this derivative is 1, which is positive. But to prove the derivative is always positive everywhere on the non-negative reals, we need to find its minimum value. Time for the second derivative. Taking the derivative of h prime. The second derivative of h is e to the x minus 2. Setting this equal to zero to find critical points. So e to the x minus 2 equals zero. Which means e to the x equals 2. Taking the natural logarithm of both sides. x equals the natural logarithm of 2, about 0 0.693. Since e to the x is always increasing, the second derivative is negative before this point and positive after. So ln of 2 is where h prime reaches its minimum. Let's evaluate h prime at this critical point. h prime of ln of 2 equals e to the ln of 2 minus 2 times ln of 2. e to the ln of 2 simplifies to just 2, so we get 2 minus 2 times ln of 2 which works out to about 0 0.614. Still positive. So the minimum value of h prime on the non-negative reals is about 0 0.614.
which is definitely positive. This means HE is strictly increasing everywhere on this interval. Since the function starts at 1 and is strictly increasing, it stays above 1 for all positive x. Therefore, h of x is always positive when x is non-negative, proving no solutions exist on this side. Part B. Now we need to show that exactly one solution exists when x is negative. Let's evaluate our helper function at x equals negative 1. h of negative 1 equals e to the negative 1 minus negative 1 squared. This equals 1 over e minus 1, which is about negative 0 0.632. So we have h of 0 equals 1, which is positive, and h of negative 1 is negative. The function changes sign. The intermediate value theorem states that if a continuous function changes sign over an interval, it must cross zero somewhere in that interval. Since our function h is continuous everywhere, being the difference of two continuous functions, and it changes from positive to negative, there must be at least one zero crossing. Therefore, there must be at least one point between negative one and zero where h crosses zero. But is this solution unique? We need to check. Let's reconsider the derivative, a h prime of x equals e to the x minus 2x. In part a, our analysis to find its minimum on the positive numbers actually revealed its global minimum for all real numbers. Since x equals ln of 2 is the only critical point of h prime, it must be the global minimum. We found that minimum value is approximately positive 0 0.614. Since the lowest value the derivative ever reaches is positive, h prime of x must be positive for all real numbers where it's x. This proves h of x is strictly increasing across its entire domain. A function that is always increasing can cross any horizontal line, including the x-axis, at most once. Therefore, the solution guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem is absolutely unique. Step 3. Now that we know exactly one solution exists and it's negative, let's actually find it. Back to our original equation. To eliminate the square on the right, let's take the square root of both sides. Square root of e to the x equals square root of x squared. Now be careful here. The square root of x squared isn't just x. It's the absolute value of x, because square root always returns the non-negative value. So we get e to the x over 2 equals absolute value of x. But we've already proven that x must be negative. So the absolute value of x is just negative x. This simplifies things nicely. Now we need to massage this into a form we can work with. Let's multiply both sides by e to the negative x over 2. This moves the exponential to the right side. We get 1 equals negative x times e to the negative x over 2. To get this into the special form we need, multiply both sides by 1 half. This will make the coefficient match the exponent, which is exactly what the Lambert W function requires. Perfect. Now the coefficient and the exponent match. We have negative x over 2 in both places. Look carefully at this pattern. We have a variable times e to that same variable. This specific form has a special inverse function. Enter the Lambert W function. It's defined as the inverse of the function u times e to the u. So if z equals u times e to the u, 
then u equals w of z. The Lambert w function has multiple branches. The principal branch, w sub 0, is defined for z at least negative 1 over e, which is about negative 0 0.368. Since our input is 1 half, which is well above this threshold, w sub 0 is the correct branch to use. Our equation fits this pattern perfectly. Here, u is negative x over 2, and z is 1 half. Applying the Lambert w function to both sides isolates u. We get negative x over 2 equals w sub 0 of 1 half. Multiply both sides by negative 2 to solve for x. And there's our exact answer. Step 4. Let's verify this actually works by plugging in numbers. W sub 0 of 1 half is about 0 0.3517. Substituting this value. So, x is about negative 0 0.7034. Now let's check both sides of the original equation. e to this power gives us about 0 0.4949. And this value squared gives us about 0 0.4948. They match to three decimal places. Our solution checks out. So let's wrap this up. We've proven with complete rigor that e to the x equals x squared has exactly one real solution x equals negative 2 times w sub 0 of 1 half, which numerically is about negative 0 0.7034. The graph gave us a hint about where to look, but it was the rigorous proof that turned that hint into certainty. Visual intuition suggests rigorous analysis proves. That's the real power of mathematics. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this blend of visual intuition and rigorous proof, consider liking this video and subscribing for more. Until next time.